Lesson 4.3 is complex series of polynomials. The fundamental theorem of algebra says that every polynomial function of degree at least one has at least one complex zero. And more specifically, a polynomial of degree n has exactly n complex zeros. And although we normally think of imaginary numbers as complex numbers, and imaginary numbers are complex numbers, real numbers are also complex numbers as well. So complex encompasses everything. Zeros could be all real, all imaginary, or a combination of the two. The conjugate roots theorem says if you have r equals a plus bi as a zero of a polynomial, then its conjugate, r bar, which would be a minus bi, must also be a zero. They always have to come in complex conjugate pairs. Similarly with irrational numbers, if a plus root b is a zero, then a minus root b also has to be a zero. Odd degree polynomials have to have at least one real zero because they end in opposite directions. They have to cross the x-axis at least once. So if we want to find all the complex zeros of a polynomial or of a function, that means all its zeros, real, imaginary, combination of the two. So for this first one, we have f of x equals x cubed minus 1. And based on the fundamental theorem of algebra, because this is a cubic function, I know this is going to have three zeros, whether they be all real, all imaginary, or a combination of the two. And the first thing I notice is that I can factor this polynomial. So this polynomial is a difference of cubes. I have a perfect cube minus a perfect cube. And whenever you have a sum or difference of cubes, they factor into the two things that were cubed. And then the first thing that was cubed squared, the two things that were cubed multiplied together, and then the second thing that was cubed squared. So the two linear terms squared together squared, and then your signs are same sign, opposite sign, always positive. So in this case, it's a negative, positive, positive. This back quadratic trinomial will never factor its prime. So this is x cubed minus 1, which is 1 cubed. So the two things that were cubed are x and 1. So I have x and 1, and then x squared, the two multiplied together, 1 times x is x, and 1 squared is just 1. And then same sign, opposite sign, always positive. So now that I have this factored, if I want to find the zeros, I set the whole thing equal to zero, and I set each one, each factor equal to zero from the zero product property. So x minus one equals zero, you just get x equals one. x squared plus x plus one equals zero does not factor, so I used quadratic formula. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. And then once I plugged everything in, you ended up with negative one plus or minus the square root of negative three over 2. Now in the past, we would just say no solution, just x equals 1. But we want all the zeros, including your imaginary zeros. So then I pulled out the square root of negative 1, I called that i, and we get negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 over 2. For our next polynomial, g of x equals 3x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 25x squared plus 45x minus 18. I notice it's a degree 4 polynomial, which means I know it's going to have exactly four zeros. And I notice that it's not something I can easily factor. It doesn't factor by grouping or any other special way. So I'm going to start out the same way that we did in 4.2, which means I'm going to find all of my possible rational zeros. So I'm going to go with the assumption that I have at least some rational zeros, and that will help me find my other zeros later on. So I set up my p's and q's. So the p's are the factors of the negative 18, and I get plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And then the q's are the factors of 3, so I get plus or minus 1 and 3. So my possible rational zeros, all of my p's divided by all of my q's. I take all my p's and divide them by 1, and I just get my p's again. I take all of my p's and divide them by 3, I get 1 third and 2 third, and all of these would give me ones I already have. So then I did negative 1, 0, and 1. When I plugged in negative 1, I got negative 40. When I plugged in 0, I got negative 18. And when I plugged in 1, I got 60. So neither 1 nor negative 1 worked, but we did have an intermediate value theorem between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So I tried 1 third. The reason I chose 1 third instead of 2 thirds, even though they're both between 0 and 1, is I noticed that f of 0 was closer to 0 than f of 1 was. So that's how I pick which one. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I chose 1 third, I brought down the 3, and I performed my synthetic division, and I ended up with a remainder of 0. So one of my zeros is x equals 1 third. I now notice that this thing factors by grouping. The way you can tell is if the factor from 3 to 6, these first two terms, is the same as the factor from the second two terms, so from 27 to 54.
So I factored this thing by grouping. First, I factored out the GCF of a 3, and I was left with x cubed plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18. So out of the first two terms, I factored out an x squared, and you're left with x plus 2. Then out of the second two terms, I factored out a 9, and again, you're left with x plus 2, so you know you can factor by grouping. So then I was left with 3 times x squared plus 9 times x plus 2. And then I set this equal to 0 to find my zeros. 3 is not going to give me anything, so I took x squared plus 9, set that equal to 0. x squared equals negative 9, which means x is equal to plus or minus 3i. And then x plus 2 equals 0, and x equals negative 2. So then my four zeros are 1 third, negative 2, and plus or minus 3i. So when you have a polynomial like this, we start with our p's and q's just like we did before assuming we have at least some rational zeros, and then once we get down to a polynomial that we know how to deal with in a different way, then we just solve it the way we normally know how to do, and our imaginary zeros come out in either something like this or a quadratic formula. For this polynomial, f of x equals 2x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 15x squared minus 207x plus 108, they give us one of the zeros is 3i. The nice thing about that is because they gave us an imaginary number, they actually gave us two zeros. Imaginary numbers always come with their complex conjugate pair, so they not only gave us 3i, they also gave us negative 3i. The way I start these is when they give me a zero, I don't have to do all the p's and q's, they're basically giving me the one to try. So I'm going to plug this into my synthetic division just like it was a real number. So you can use synthetic division with imaginary numbers exactly the same way you do with your real numbers. So it gets a little bit complex, but our 3i's are 0, so that goes in our box. We still bring down the 2, so then 3i times 2 is 6i. But these don't combine because they're not like terms, so you end up with just negative 3 plus 6i. So now when I multiply this thing by 3i, I get negative 9i plus 18i squared, but 18i squared is negative 18. So I end up with negative 18 minus 9i. I add that to negative 5, I get negative 23 minus 9i, and then I repeat. I multiply this by 3i, I distribute it all the way through, i squared is negative 1, I end up with 27 minus 69i, plus negative 15 is 12 minus 69i, multiply that by 3i, you end up with 207 plus 36i, which cancels out the negative 207, you're left with just the 36i, times 3i ends up being negative 108, and so yes, we do in fact get a 0 here on the end. Now it's like, okay, but now we have imaginary numbers, so what? Well, this was an x to the fifth, so this still reduced down to an x to the fourth. It's just a little bit weird because it has those imaginary numbers in it, but we have this other zero, negative 3i. So on this reduced polynomial, I'm going to do synthetic division with my second zero, negative 3i. So on this thing, it makes it much nicer because I've done this negative 3i, I brought down my 2 times negative 3i is negative 6i, cancels with the 6i. Bring down the negative 3, negative 3i times negative 3 is 9i, cancels with the negative 9i, you get negative 23, times negative 3i is 69i, cancels with the negative 69i, you now have a 12, times negative 3i is negative 36i, which cancels with the 36i, and you end up with a remainder of 0, which we knew we should have gotten because we know negative 3i is a 0. So now we have a cubic function that I can treat just like my other cubic function. So I can try and factor it by grouping. If it does not, then I would go to my p's and q's. So I did all my p's and q's based on this cubic function, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 23x plus 12, because it did not factor by grouping. So my p's would be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. My q's would be plus or minus 1 and 2. So my possible rational zeros are all my p's divided by all my q's, so all of my p's, and 1 half and 3 halves. Um, I tried negative 1, 0, and 1. None of them worked, but I got an intermediate value theorem between 0 and 1. And since these were both evenly on either side of zero, I picked one half, and that was also the only one between zero and one. So I did my synthetic division with one half, and I ended up with a remainder of zero, and I, so I ended up with two x squared minus two x minus 24. I know one of my zeros is one half, and then I factored this thing, I took out a two, and then I was left with x squared minus x minus 12, which factors into x minus four and x plus three, and so my last two zeros are positive four and negative three. This was a degree 5 polynomial, so I needed five zeros. 3i, negative 3i, 1 half, 4, and negative 3.
Find a degree for polynomial with real coefficients, so written out in standard form and all of the coefficients are real numbers, with the zeros 1, that has a multiplicity of 2, and 1 plus i. Since this is a degree 4 polynomial, there has to be four zeros. This 1, since it has a multiplicity of 2, it counts as two separate zeros. And then 1 plus i, now we're at three zeros. And buy one, get one free, whenever you have a complex number, then its conjugate is also a zero, so 1 minus i. So we can use these zeros to write ourselves a polynomial function. So I'm going to start with it in factored form. So for the first one, x equals 1 with the multiplicity of 2, I have x minus 1 quantity squared. And then for the second two, 1 plus i and 1 minus i, I'm going to write them just like they were real numbers. So I'm going to write them as x minus my 0, but I'm going to make sure I put parentheses around them. So x minus 1 plus i and x minus 1 minus i, just like if it was a 2 or a 7. It's x minus whatever your x-intercept is. And then I'm going to fold this out, and I'm going to start with folding together the complex conjugate pairs, and then this one separately, because whenever you multiply these together, your imaginary parts will drop out. So if I fold out x minus 1 quantity squared, you get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then if I fold out, I distribute the negative here, so x minus 1 minus i and x minus 1 plus i. You end up with x squared minus x plus xi minus x plus 1 minus i minus ix plus i minus i squared. So the plus xi and the minus xi and the negative i and the plus i cancel. And then minus i squared would be minus the negative 1, so plus 1. So you end up with x squared minus 2x plus 2. So now I'm going to take these two trinomials and foil them together. Foiling all this out, I end up with a 4 degree polynomial, p of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus 6x plus 2. So I have all real coefficients and a four-degree polynomial with those zeros. So this one's similar. I want a cubic polynomial function that has real coefficients that has 2 and 3 minus i as roots. Again, 2 for one deal. If 3 minus i is a 0, then 3 plus i must also be a 0. I set it up the same way. So I have a 0 of 2, and it doesn't tell me otherwise. So I'm going to assume my multiplicity of, is 1, so x minus 2. And then I have 3 minus i as a root and 3 plus i as a root. So x minus the quantity 3 minus i and x minus the quantity 3 plus i. I fold together the complex part first because all of the i's will go away. You end up with x squared minus 6x plus 10. And then I fold that into x minus 2. And so the polynomial that is cubic with 0, 2, and 3 minus i is x cubed minus 8x squared plus 22x minus 20.